pathogenic antigens that enter our body must be presented to the T cells, to be specific, the T helper cells. However, the T helper cells cannot bind to the antigens directly. Therefore, the antigen must be presented to the T helper cells by using antigen presenting cells or APC, such as macrophage, dendritic cells, and also B cells. So this APC will display the foreign antigen and their own surface protein to the T helper cells, which later will activate the T helper cells. How does the APC activate the T helper cells? So at the beginning, APC are actually inactive until their pattern recognition receptors recognize a particular molecule structure on the pathogens, which are the antigens. And once they are activated, the APC ingests the pathogen. The lysosomal enzyme inside the APC will degrade most of the pathogenic antigens into smaller antigen fragments. So these antigen fragments will be displayed on the cell surface of the APC with the help of a particular protein owned by the APC called class 2 MHC. The activated APC such as macrophage, will release a signaling molecules together with the displayed antigen to the T helper cells. The T helper cells will bind to the antigen and the release of the chemical will activate the T helper cells. Dendritic cells is a type of immune cells that are found in the tissues of our skin, lungs and gastrointestinal tract. Once dendritic cells become an APC, they leave the epithelial lining guided by a chemical, which are the chemokines, and migrate to the lymph nodes. There, they will activate specific T cells capable to respond to the antigens that activate the dendritic cells earlier. How about B cells? B cells present antigens to already activated T helper cells, which in turn activate the B cell themselves in antibody mediated immunity. Activated helper T cells also help to stimulate cytotoxic T cells in cell mediated immunity that we, we are going to discuss later. The ability of our immune system to recognize its own cell and to differentiate those cells from the foreign pathogen depends on a group of protein markers found on the cell membrane called MHC. MHC is actually a type of protein encoded by a group of genes by the host cells. It binds to antigen fragments and displays the fragments on the host cell surface with a process called antigen presentation. It presents the antigen fragments on the host cells. So let us have a look of how this works. This is a healthy whole cell. A healthy whole cell will bind to its one normal peptide or self antigen with MHC and present it to the surface of the cell membrane of this healthy whole cell. When, a, when an immune cell or a lymphocyte approaches, it can recognize the healthy cells by the self antigen. Therefore, this lymphocyte will leave this healthy host cell alone. In conclusion, the lymphocyte knows that this is a healthy cell. How about an infected cell? In the case of this, the infected cells will digest the antigen fragment, the pathogenic antigen fragment, and present it to the cell surface by the help of this MHC. The immune cells or the lymphocyte able to recognize this foreign antigen or pathogenic antigen. They bind to them and initiate a defense mechanism or an immune response which finally will destroy this infected cell. There are two types of MHC, class 1 MHC and class 2 MHC. Class 1 MHC 
can be found on all nucleated cells. The figure that I shown earlier is actually referring to the class 1 MHC. And the second type of MHC is class 2 MHC. It can be found on B cells, macrophage, and dendritic cells, which basically are the APC. Class 1 MHC will be recognized by T cytotoxic T cell. Once they are recognized, so they will bind to the antigen that has been displayed by the class 1 MHC. Class 2 MHC will be recognized by the T helper cells. Once they recognize the antigen fragment presented by the class 2 MHC, the T helper cells will bind to them. This figure shows the two classes of MHC and the T cells that recognize and bind to them. For figure A, these infected cells will digest the pathogenic antigen into antigen fragment. This antigen fragment will bind to class 1 MHC owned by these infected cells. The binding of antigen fragment and class 1 MHC will form a complex called antigen MHC complex. Antigen MHC complex will be presented to the surface of the cell membrane of the infected cell via antigen presentation. The activated T cytotoxic T cell will able to recognize this pathogenic antigen that been displayed on the surface of these infected cells and they bind to it via its T cell receptor. Next, the T cytotoxic T cell will destroy these infected cells by releasing porphyrin followed with granzyme which leads to the cell death of this infected cell. How about the second figure? The APC, such as macrophage, will engulf the pathogen. The lysosomal enzyme inside the macrophage will digest the pathogenic antigen into antigen fragment. The antigen fragment will bind to class 2 MHC molecule owned by this macrophage. It will form antigen MHC complex and, and the antigen MHC complex will be presented to the surface of the cell membrane of this APC. T helper cells will recognize the foreign antigen presented on the surface of this APC and bind to them via T cell receptor. What happens after this is macrophage will release cytokines to the T helper cells and the T helper cells will also release cytokines to itself and it will be activated. These T helper cells then will be known as activated helper activated T helper cells which later involve in cell mediated immunity and antibody mediated immunity. In conclusion MHC act as a self-marker to enable the immune system to differentiate self from non-self. The concept of self from non-self antigen are mature B and T cell able to differentiate the self antigen from non-self antigen. Self antigen can be found on the whole cell, healthy whole cell, and it will not trigger an immune response. However, non-self antigen that can be found on foreign cells such as bacteria or virus that enter the body or even the surface of our infected cells will trigger an immune response.